Good morning. Good morning. It's Trinity Sunday, and this is the Sunday when we celebrate the doctrine of, you guessed it, the Holy Trinity, which is one God in three persons, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Now this is, I confess, a complicated topic. The creed tries to explain it, and even the creed can be even a little uh, confusing at times. God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made of one being with the Father. I'll give you five dollars if you can tell me what that really means. <laughs> I'll also get you a job at a seminary. Uh, <laughs> and because it's a complicated topic, it's a hard topic to preach on, and you really shouldn't envy preachers today. Today is actually a really popular day uh, to make deacons and interns preach. Um, and I spent a lot of time as an intern and a deacon uh, before I got here, and a little while as a deacon while I was here, so I've gotten pretty practiced at this. Before we get started, I do just want to say this about this topic. God does not expect us to understand everything. Amen. Not being able to understand everything actually keeps us just a little bit humble. And you've got a shallow shallow faith if you don't make room for a little mystery in your spiritual life. And sometimes people don't handle a mysterious God very well because what they want is a God they can put in a box and a God that they can control. But the God of the Trinity says that that will never, ever happen. The God of the Trinity, triunity, three in one, tells us that we ought to remember that humility and that there is value in having a God so dynamic that our hearts, minds, and souls are always kept wondering just exactly how it is God works and always amazed by the great wonder that is God. Now the Trinity came about because in the early church they came to know God in three distinct ways. In God the Father, often associated with God the Creator. God the Son, or Christ. And God the Holy Spirit, which is usually just called the Holy Spirit. We firmly believe that there is just one God. So these three ways of knowing God must just then be three different parts of the same God. And while the Trinity is a mystery that keeps us ever active in our prayer life, it does actually tell us a lot about God. You see, God the Father, as I said, is often seen as God the Creator. And so that tells us that at the heart of God is creativity. God the Son is, is Jesus Christ and his, his teaching and His power and His love. He, he lived and died and rose again because He loved us so. And this tells us that there is love at the heart of God. And the Holy Spirit gives us power now. The Holy Spirit gives us fire now. The Holy Spirit lives within us now and inspires us each moment of each night and each day to go out and be examples of goodness and grace in this world. And that Spirit rests in unity with the Father and the Son. So that tells us that everything is connected. And at the heart of God, there is unity. In short... The Trinity tells us that at the heart of God there is creativity, love, and unity. Believing in God the Father, the Creator, we believe in a God who made and makes all things. We believe in a God who said, let there be, and there was, who made humans and plants and animals, and who keeps making us. Did y'all ever stop and think about that? Creation began on the first day, but it didn't actually end then. Every day when the sun rises and sets, when another flower blooms and another egg hatches, or another newborn cries, or another person breathes their last and is laid low into the ground, creation continues. Each day is a new let there be. God the Creator is just as present and active with us now as on the first day. And creation is an ongoing thing that happens every day. And we humans have done ourselves and our world a lot of harm in thinking that we are not part of this and that this isn't happening. That we are somehow above all of that. That beautiful and delicate balance of creation that God has chosen as the way for life to blossom and flourish is not something that we should care about. 
When we trash this world and we use up and pollute the planet, when another species goes extinct, when another person or group is persecuted or harassed, when another war is begun, we decide that we don't really believe in the Trinity because we don't really believe in God, the Creator. Because if we did, if we really, really did, we would behave very differently. Amen. We would take better care of the wonderful things that God has made. The Trinity is an ongoing reminder for Christians to be good stewards of this world and the plants and the animals and the people in it. One of the most precious creations ever to appear in this world was Jesus of Nazareth. The human Jesus was created, but inside of that person was the eternal Son, Christ, sent down from heaven. God the Son set aside his glory to become truly and fully human. Not just pretending, but being human. God the Son did this in the form of Jesus Christ. And in doing so, God came to not just to make human lives, but to really know what it was to be human. And as Jesus, God the Son, came to know what it was to have a mother, and what it was to learn and grow as a child, what it was to walk and talk and eat and breathe and live, God came to know in a very personal kind of way what it was to have a hard day's work, what it was to be both popular and hated, what it was to be hungry and thirsty and overheated. I know somebody can relate to that. Amen. And if you can't, then you ain't paying attention to your own life. God came to know what it was to make friends and give them all your heart, only to have them turn on you and abandon you when you needed them most. God the Son came and knew what it was to be judged by religious ministers unfairly and public officials unjustly, what it was to have freedom denied and to feel the crack of the whip against your back, to be treated as a criminal or as a cancer or as a social poison for doing nothing more than just being who you are. Are. God the Son came among us and we showed the one through whom we were made and whose image we bear the very worst of who we were and did it almost entirely without shame. God the Son even came to know the first hand pains of death and the shadows of the grave went low, down into the pit, down into the depth, down deep as anyone has ever gone into despair and hopelessness and death. And by the power of the Trinity, of the three persons of God acting together in one unstoppable power, God the Son came through. Amen? God the Son came out. Amen? Amen? God the Son got up and walked about and ascended. Amen? Amen? God the Son arose and lived again and lives forever. God the Son conquered hate and pain and death and abandonment and abuse and fear and corruption and oppression. God the Son, working with God the Father and God the Spirit, overcame discrimination and the cruel master's whip and the hateful minister's lies and the corrupt government's failures and injustices. And now God the Son is free, and because of that, we are free too. The story of God the Son coming into this world to overcome the trouble of this world and make a way for us to follow him is indeed the greatest story ever told. And never let this world tell you you are not free to be yourself. Amen. Never let this world kill the greatest story ever told that you keep in your heart. Never let them kill that divine song in your soul. Never let them kill the Holy Spirit of justice that speaks through your voice and works through your hands and walks with your feet in the pursuit of goodness and justice in this land and indeed in all lands. Amen. And that Holy Spirit keeps us together. That Holy Spirit sustains us with power, with endurance, with wisdom and compassion, and that Spirit does it all with love. The eternal love of God that is God because God is Trinity. You see, because God is Trinity, 
God's always got someone to love. And that teaches us something too. You can't love unless you've got someone to love. And if you can love one person, you might as well love 10 people. Amen. And if you can love 10 people, you might as well love 100 people. Amen. And if you can love 100 people, you might as well love 1,000 people. And you can do this when you get caught up in the power of the Holy Spirit. You can do this when you are baptized in the name of the Holy Trinity and made one with God the Son. You can do this when you realize that whenever you look in the face of every person, including your own, you look into the face of someone that God the Creator has made. I have seen it truly said, and I'll tell you now, you will never look into the eyes of a person that God does not love. Amen. Remember that about your enemies. And remember that about yourself. Mm -hmm. On Trinity Sunday, you could get caught up in a logic trap of trying to figure out why or how God is Trinity. You could get caught up in an argument about basic math, one plus one plus one does not equal one, so how does God having three parts still remain one God? You could hear a word from me about ancient metaphysical philosophy that somebody came up with whose name I probably can't pronounce, but be glad I spared you all that. <laughs> you could spend Trinity Sunday messing around with those things for quite some time and not feel particularly illuminated. You might just feel frustrated. Or. You could take a second and you could celebrate and be glad that our God is an unending relationship of creativity, love, and unity. Amen. Amen. You could celebrate and be glad that the mysterious and mighty God who made us knows us well, loves us flawlessly, and never, ever lets us go. You should take this day and celebrate creativity, love, and unity. You should do something creative or thank someone for something creative they've done that's enriched your life. You could tell someone you love them or reach out and repair a broken relationship. Or you could sit down and really think about what it means for us to all be in this life and on this planet together, united together. And for that unity not to come from the Constitution or from some philosopher or theologian, but for that unity to come from none other than God Almighty. And that we humans are at our best when we are working and living well together. Amen. Whatever you do, and however you want to do it, do it in a spirit of love and celebrate God being God and celebrate the fact that this mysterious and sometimes confusing God made you. Amen.